Yo, what's up? It's your boy Talks the Turtle, and I'm coming to you from the Painted Lady Tattoo and Piercing Studio in Park Mall, Santon. And you're watching Permanently Painted. Welcome to Permanently Painted, and I am your boy Talks the Turtle, and today we are going to be going through 10 misconceptions with regards to piercings. These are just 10 kind of points that I want to touch on that I've been hearing a lot of misconceptions around and none are more important than the other. These are not ranked in a specific order. This is not the 10th most common mistake and the most common mistake. These are just 10 random things that I just want to clear up with regards to piercing. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, we are talking about not chasing the money. Do not think about the money. 90% of the time when someone phones me, it's how much is this piercing? Okay, cool, thanks, but no questions about the pain, no questions about the healing process, no question about the jewelry used, no question about the procedure, nothing like that. They just want to know how much it is. And then I assume when they don't phone me back, it's because they found someone cheaper. Now, I don't mind if you've got a different piercer. My problem comes in is that when you're going to a cheaper piercer, Odds are it's oftentimes a piercer who hasn't got a lot of experience, they do not have the correct cleaning procedures, they pierce with cheap jewelry, they pierce with cheap needles, there's an array of different things or maybe they're just cheap because they want to help you out and they're actually a really good piercer. It is possible to find good piercers at a cheap price. This also brings us to the flip side, don't go to a piercer just because they're expensive. Sometimes the shop rent is just really high, sometimes the dude's just super stingy and just wants lots of money. So what you need to do is you need to hop onto a piercer who you think you want to get pierced. That's Instagram or websites or Facebook or wherever it is they put their portfolio. You need to go through their portfolio and from there, perhaps if you can even find people who've had their piercings for a couple of months, so you can see how they've healed up, see that they're done properly. And if you start seeing an array of different people who've been pierced by this person, taking all of their piercings out and taking all the jewelry out, you've probably got a problem there. Next thing I want to jump onto is not following the pain, not thinking about the pain. Don't look at a piercing and go, oh, that would be great to have, except it looks so sore. If you do that, you will never have a piercing. Piercings hurt, all of them. If someone tells you that this is a painless piercing, they're lying to you. We're stabbing a hole in your body and putting some jewelry in there. It's going to have some sort of level of pain. So push through, beauty is pain, you will get a dope piercing if you've just got the fortitude to sit for that little bit of pain. Next thing we want to talk about is tongue piercing. Speaking of pain, tongue piercings aren't sore to get, tongue piercings are sore to heal. This is due to the swelling, which brings me on to the next point about tongue piercings. They do not give you a lisp. Well, they do. They give you a lisp for that first week. Once that healing has happened, once the swelling has gone down, your speech impediments exit. I know people with transversal tongue piercings. I know people with three tongue piercings behind each other. And they speak as clearly as they did before they got the piercing. Another thing that I want to bring with tongue piercings is they do not cause a lisp. However, they can cause t uh, chipping of your teeth. Particularly the transversal one that goes through the sides of your tongue. They aren't that great on dental care. So if you are wanting to get one of those piercings, make sure you've got a good dentist on speed dial. The next point I want to be talking about is stretched ears, stretching your ears, tunnels, however, plugs, however else you want to refer to them. Don't do this at home. That's where I want to start. Please do not do this at home, kids. It will be what your mom said it's going to be and it will be an irreversible procedure. You will have those giant things that you have to go and get plastic surgery to close up if you want to close in one day. If you do them properly with a piercer who knows what they're doing, who is using the proper stretching kit that you use for stretching and gauging up piercings, you won't have an issue. So you can close those up. You won't ever be able to close them up completely. However, they will close up to a reasonable size that people will be a little bit more happy with them. Tunnels are also not done with scalpels. They are not done with hole punches. We do not remove any flesh from the ear. As I said before, we use the stretching kits to gauge them up. If done properly without any micro tears and that, you will be able to retain those original 1.6 holes. Insisting on jewelry, specific types of jewelry, is the next thing that I want to chat about. So if you want to get your conch piercing and you want to do an orbital conch, I understand that and I understand that's what you're going for and that's the look you're going for. However, we cannot put the loop in right away. The reason being is the swelling. The way it's going to swell, it's going to shape the channel differently. Rings often don't allow enough space for swelling. So what we're going to do is we're not going to put that loop in. We're going to put in it generally for a conscious a librette bar. The reason we do this is that it's a long straight post bar that will keep give you a straight channel of your piercing 
as well as a light space for any swelling that's going to happen, that you don't actually have the swelling breaching the edges of the piercing. That'll cause you insurmountable amounts of pain. You have not felt pain like a freshly pierced piercing pushing up against the balls of the jewelry. It's not fun. It's going to be terrible. You don't want to be putting on any funky jewelry or anything like that. There's little gaps and crevices that more bacteria can get into. So rather just the standard plain librette bars to start. It's only four weeks, it goes by really quick, and then you can put in any kind of jewelry you want. The next one that I want to touch on may be a little bit controversial, may upset a few people. However, I want to talk about children and piercings, babies and piercings in specific. So, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, you have your one-year-old baby girl, and you think she needs piercings in order to be a girl. That is false. You do not have to give your little daughter ear piercings in order for her to be your daughter. Wait until the child is of a more appropriate age to get those ear piercings, the earlobe piercings. The reason why I say this is A, they have not even yet begun to grow, let alone get to the point where they finish growing. Those piercings are going to move around funny, they're going to go into weird places and you're going to just have lopsided earrings. B, You've now got a factor of these small little balls and earrings and things on their ear. If they're playing around, they're going to put it in their mouth and they're going to choke on it if it comes out. They're going to put their hands on those piercings and those piercings are going to get dirty. Baby's hands are dirty. They touch everything they can. You're going to get those piercings infected on your baby. You don't want that. You've also got the factor of if you pass out of that house party and someone tattoos I love my mom across their face, they're going to be really bleak. Why? Because they didn't give consent for this. Your baby cannot give consent to get pierced. Babies don't need to be pierced until at least they can understand what's going to happen to them. This is also a procedure that requires needles and if a baby's scared and doesn't want to go through the second piercing or whatever and they put their hand in the way, this becomes difficult for your piercer. Next thing is you're probably not going to find a piercer that is going to want to pierce your baby and so you're probably going to have to go to someone who's using a piercing gun and then you're just going to damage your baby's ears, which is once again not a good idea. What I want to talk about is, well, the next four things I'm going to talk about we have done before. You can check in the description below for piercing aftercare, the piercing aftercare video, where I cover the next four points. So I'm just going to go through them briefly. Changing of jewelry. Do not change the jewelry sooner than your piercer tells you to. Infections come to play, buying the wrong kinds of jewelry, we get that you want nice jewelry in those piercings, just wait the time limit that we tell you. The reason we tell you this is not so that we can't sell you jewelry or not so we can't make money off of you or anything like that. We tell you this because we want our piercing and your piercing to look the best it possibly can. Guns are a no-no. You're not a cow. Guns are developed for cattle. So guns are bad. They're not less painful. They're more painful. They're not easier to get. They're worse to get. They are unsterile because you cannot sterilize those piercing guns so if blood splatters onto that piercing gun it has now got someone else's blood and they're going to put that into your ear and you don't want that cleaning products let's not use hydrogen peroxide and methylated spirits and rubbing alcohol and all of those things they are too harsh on your piercing then the last one and this is another reason why we don't put the rings in your conch is turning your piercings it's going to extend your heating process and it's going to damage that channel. Don't turn your piercings, twist them, twirl, turn them around and twirl them. Leave them be so that they can heal up nicely. You don't want to break down your, the skin that is already being formed because that is going to then cause keloids and more problems. If you've got any questions or wondering about anything about piercings or tattoos, drop it down in the comments below, hit me up on a DM. I'm willing to answer all of those questions as soon as I can. And uh, if you are finding these videos helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, whatever platform you may be on, just hit that button.